are starting to get serious. There are three guys left, and you're one of them. All right, people, we are back in studio. I'm Dave Rubin. This is The Rubin Report. It is April 9th, 2024. We are live streaming on the Rumble, on the Locals, and on the YouTube. If you have not shared, subscribe, tap the notification bell, or whatever other things you can click over there on your computer machine, go ahead and do that. Post-game show always at rubinreport.locals.com. 30 seconds after... The main program and that very brief uh, cold open was uh, a little ditty we put together from my interview with Robert F. Kennedy Jr., which we put up part one yesterday at 11 o'clock. Uh, we did not have a normal live show, as many of you noted. Uh, yesterday, we had some internal housekeeping things that we needed to take care of in studio here, but we are back in business today. The full RFK interview is up at Locals already, uh, and clips will be coming out everywhere else throughout the week. And I'm telling you right now, I don't do the prediction often. I think we got a 9-5 today. I feel so confident about the program and I am rested after a three-day weekend because of uh, what we did yesterday that I am ready to nail it and I feel we have the right topics and insight to offer you, the wise Ruben Report viewer. The theme of today's show, uh, you know, we showed you a couple clips last week of Sage Steele. Sage Steele former ESPN anchor, now going independent and bouncing around on a lot of the programs of the usual suspects and talking about how highly controlled the corporate media atmosphere is. Uh, we're gonna connect that to a little bit about what's going on in the very, very woke NCAA tournament, or I should say W, is it the W NCAA? Do we say the W? It's still, it's the NCAA women's Women are, are uh, females with vaginas. That's very different from females with penises. We're gonna get into all of that. We're gonna combine this to the cultural Marxism that we now see in really every single part of our society, as you guys know, from the political part to the cultural part to the educational part and everything else. We're gonna connect this with some of the awful politicians like AOC who have ushered in the horrible policies that now they complain about. And then the, the series of people like the quote unquote late night comedians who run cover for all of this nonsense. So I wanna start with a clip of Sage Steele uh, who was on Tucker Carlson's show a couple days ago talking about sort of the woke political shift that occurred at ESPN, Disney owned ESPN, uh, and then sort of how that was connected to Trump, the pandemic, and a bunch more. Take a look. I, you know, look back and you realize, gosh, we were kind of inching closer and closer. Yeah. And then especially when, when Trump won in 2016. Yes. Then it was like, it just, wow. Um, I remember talking to my bosses, and this so this 2016, 2017, and saying, what are we doing? And why are we allowing this? Michael Jordan said it in the 80s. Republicans buy sneakers too. And, yeah. and, and because he was criticized, as Tiger Woods has been criticized for not being vocal enough for the black community. Of politically. course. And to me, they're smart businessmen who say, yeah. no, 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 I want everybody. So I would use that example to my bosses at my sports network. Like, don't we want everybody to watch ESPN? Why divide? I believe if people want politics, they can go to CNN. They can go to Fox News. Of course. They came to us as a respite and as an escape. Exactly. And so why, why, why? And then that president was ousted, a little drama, and then the new president came in, and I think it was 2017, 2017 Jimmy Pataro, and he agreed, and it was great. And he kind of drew the line in the sand, like, we're not doing this. We want everybody to watch. And then the pandemic hit, and then George Floyd happened, and it's been a mess since. So y your read is that the president of ESPN was really trying to just be a sports channel but he was overwhelmed by the events. most the, the current president yes yes and then listen who are we owned by well good point disney yeah a very political very left-wing company yes okay before i do any analysis of that i should note because there's a couple locals comments apparently that flew in immediately i'm not wearing my wedding ring fear not i did not get divorced everything is fine in the reuben household i was playing basketball last night i take my ring off for that i forgot to put it on 
We are retrieving my ring at the moment. It will be on in moments. Uh, that's number one. Number two, as it relates to that clip, that really sums up almost everything that I've been talking about as it pertains to sports and corporate control media and everything else. Sage makes a point. And Sage, by the way, will be in studio here on Wednesday. So we'll obviously unpack a whole bunch more about this. And she has subsequently said over the last couple of days that while she has begun to tell the story of the amount of corporate control there and the control that they had over her when she was interviewing Joe Biden, uh, that she has more to tell. So I'm gonna try to get whatever that more is, we're gonna try to get there. Um, but what she talks about there, that sports is supposed to be a respite. You are supposed to turn on whatever sport you like, whether it's basketball, baseball, hockey, etc., so that you can escape from the lunacy of life. And then with the Trump election, and then it got you know jacked up on steroids, <laughs> literally steroids because of COVID and everything else, everything became politicized. So every time you turned on one of these things, why do I no longer watch the NBA? Because they put BLM logos on the court because every time uh, you'd watch the analysis instead of a halftime show, they were telling you that you were racist. Then they inject all the gender nonsense into it everything became that thing, right? And we all know it, and that's why ratings have dumped out for so many of these things. People are just tuning out in droves. People are also tuning out from the corporate controlled sports media, which is why ESPN's ratings are in the tank. And a guy like Clay Travis uh, can create outkick.com uh, alternative media, and then it absolutely blows up. Or just look at Barstool Sports, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I want to show you a six second clip because, you know, she interviewed, Sage interviewed Joe Biden a couple of years ago when he first, uh, I think he was two months into his presidency. This is just a six second clip. We showed it to you last week. And she has now said that they controlled every single word that she said. Here as we get set for a wonderful day I'm in sports, opening day for America's national. Okay. So she sits down with the president. It's hyper controlled. She does that, and now what was the actual truth of it? We showed you this on Friday, but I think it's worth reiterating because it's gonna set us up nicely for everything else today. This was about two months after he took office. Um, that was an interesting experience in its own right because it was so structured and I was told, you will say every word that we write out, you will not deviate from the script and go. To the word, like every single question, was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Absolutely. I was on script and was told not to deviate. It was very much, this is what you will ask. This is how you will say it. Um, no follow-ups. No follow-ups. Next. I knew that this was a lot bigger than just the wonderful editors that I worked with. This went up to the fourth floor, as we said, <laughs> that we're all the, the bosses, the top executives, the decision makers are the president of our company. Okay, so she interviews the president of the United States. It's hyper scripted. They go through the censors dozens of times, all that. I guess that doesn't surprise anybody, right? Like when you heard that for the first time last week, does it surprise you? No, but it is good to see people breaking out of the system. She was sick of the woke crap at ESPN left. Now she does her podcast independently. It's fantastic, right? Like that's, that is now the, the major divide in the media landscape. People that want to be sort of corporate controlled, get a big paycheck from a company and toe the line versus people that suddenly go independent. And if you do something good, people are going to support you like you guys support me. And then it allows that person to say the truth, right? Or at least what they believe to be true. Hopefully that, that certainly would be the hope. Now, of course, she also intimated or basically said at the end of her interview with uh, Tucker Carlson in the previous clip that who owns ESPN? Well, who does own ESPN? Yes, it is Mickey Mouse. Disney owns ESPN. Disney, which by the way, lost big time here in Florida and has lost many of their special rights and privileges and tax breaks and the rest of it. They now have to play by the same rules as SeaWorld and Gatorville and all of those places. Gator, Gatorland, I think it's Gatorland actually. I, I went to Gatorland when we were, I was about 12 years old. My parents took us down to Disneyland. We went to Gatorland and at the time, I'm sure they don't do this anymore, but at the time they would take a giant, there was a giant pool of gators and they would take live chickens on a wire and hang them and you'd watch the gators just jump up and crush the birds and blood flying everywhere, body parts. Do I have a ring? I have a ring. I got the ring. Here we go. I got the ring. Fear not, people. All is well in the Rubin household. It's all good. It's all good. That would have, people would have never stopped. Never stopped. Anyway, 
Um, Bob Iger was interviewed about, Bob Iger, who is now the CEO, he is the once and future CEO of Disney. He was the once CEO, then that guy Bob Chapik took over. He like put the place woke on steroids, completely kind of crushed Disney. Now they brought back Bob Iger. And he was asked about some of Elon Musk's criticisms of woke Disney and uh, didn't seem to want to talk about it too much. You know, speaking of uh, hostilities, I mean, I know you are aware of Elon Musk and what he's been continues to say or at least uh, post on his X platform. How do you approach that? You know, somebody who's got such a big microphone as Musk kind of coming after you all the time. I ignore it. You do. Yeah. It's just there's no there's no relevance to the Walt Disney Company or to me. Uh, so when he says I would, you know, buy shares of Peltz was on the board and Next he subject. comes after you as being because uh, he's on his anti woke campaign. People have been coming after me and the company for years, and it's just I don't get distracted by those things. The the thing is, Bob Iger, you should be distracted by those things because there are millions and millions of people in America who no longer believe in your product, right? They don't believe in your sub product, which is ESPN. They're not watching that as much anymore because they've had it. And they don't believe in your main project, Disney, because you've put all of this insane woke stuff, gender confusion, intentionally designed in these kids programs, hyper racialization, talking about white privilege and the rest of it in cartoons for kids. So Elon is correctly criticizing you like quite literally millions of other people are. Millions of people who are no longer seeing your movies. The movies aren't doing as well. They're not buying your products anymore. They're turning to alternatives. A place like Daily Wire now does kids programming. A place like PragerU now does kids programming. So to be like, well, I ignore it. I don't care about that guy. Okay, well, that might just be at your own peril because good people are waking up to a lot of this nonsense. I've got a good person on the other side of this ad. That's Megan Kelly. But first, let's talk about Preserve Gold. Guys, a new central bank digital currency is coming and could replace your dollars with digital currency. With it could come surveillance of your lives, freezing of assets, and government control over bank accounts and how we spend our own cash. Americans who want to protect their liberty and privacy need to prepare themselves for what's to come. That's why many Americans are turning to physical gold and silver to diversify their wealth. If you want to help to protect your retirement, I recommend you request your free investment guide from my friends at Preserve Gold today. They'll explore the right options for you and will help you with the process to have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA, 401k, or other qualified retirement account. And they make it easy. They're a triple B accredited uh, company with zero consumer complaints and hundreds of satisfied clients. They're also a founding member of the Precious Metals Association, so you know you're in good hands. And as an exclusive offer for Rubin Report viewers, they'll give you up to $10,000 in free gold and silver with a qualifying purchase or retirement account rollover. They'll even throw in an immediate $500 into your account if you request your investor guide today. So don't wait, visit preservegold.com slash Dave today to get your free gold and silver investment guide and take the first step towards helping protect your wealth. Again, that's preservegold.com slash Dave to get your free guide from the good people at Preserve Gold. And now back to me. Okay, so as always, it's not that hard to do. Uh, we can illustrate how the woke are destroying everything. That's what Sage is laying out, what happened to uh, ESPN as it related to race and as it related to gender and then COVID and all of that stuff. Then you've got the corporate controlled, one of the most powerful businessmen in the world, Bob Iger of Disney, basically being like, I don't listen to criticism as his product starts to falter. But let's connect this to like the granular part of what's going on in the sports and corporate world because it is the NCAA tournament last night. I guess I guess it's over, right? I, I didn't pay much attention. Who won? Who's the big winner? UConn is the end and all. <laughs> That's hilarious. I meant who won the game. Apparently UConn, University of Connecticut won the big game. But Chris, our back end YouTube and Rumble guy, we love you, Chris. And Chris, congratulations. You won the Ruben Report tournament. And what are we saying? Chris is getting a $200 Amazon card. Pretty good for Chris. Hot diggity dog, Chris. Anywho, Chris probably didn't even know that. Good for Chris. Anyway, let's talk about how these bad ideas, they don't just break institutions, they actually can literally break bones. Uh, so as it is NCAA week, uh, I wanna show you video of South Carolina women's basketball coach, Dawn Staley, this is just a couple days ago, saying she supports transgender women, AKA men, playing women's college basketball. 
Dan Zajczewski, Outkick Coach, you just talked about you know what a massive weekend this is, obviously, for women's basketball, women's sports in general. One of the major issues facing women's sports right now is the debate discussion topic about the inclusion of transgender athletes, biological males, in women's sports. I was wondering if you would tell me your position on that issue. Um, damn, you got deep on me, didn't you? I, I, I'm on the, I mean, I'm on the, the opinion of, of if you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's, that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? Do you, do you think uh, transgender women should be able to participate that, that, That's your question you want basketball. me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am. All right, so Dawn, you're, you're a little confused about a couple things. Now, we just checked the numbers. Dawn Staley played, she was a pretty damn good women's basketball player, and there's nothing to be ashamed of by that. That's great. Uh, Dawn Staley played eight seasons in the WNBA. She averaged 16.3 points a game. That is a nice number. Uh, and she would average zero points in the NBA, right? Because the best female basketball player would not be good enough to be the worst NBA basketball player. That's just it. Men and women are different. Men generally stronger, more athletic. The bones, the body structure is different. The temperament is different. Not in every case, but we just know it. If you opened up the end, if you said to the NBA, okay, anyone can play in it, but we're still going to take the best players, there'd be zero women. Now, what she's saying, it's so dangerous. And you can see as she's saying it, it's almost like they don't really believe it. But, but this woke thing, it's like an energy. It really is like an energy. One of the things I've been saying to Phoenix is I've really tried to put together a theory here. There are a series of people now that are just energy chasers and you see some shiny thing out there and you're just constantly ch chasing it. And that's what the woke have become. They don't know what they're chasing, but they're chasing something. So she kind of knows it's not right. She's like, she's like, yeah, if you consider yourself a woman, Okay, so are you telling me that if, I don't even watch the NBA anymore, who's in the NBA now? If Steph Curry was like, yeah, my name's Stephanie Curry, and I'm gonna put on a dress and play in the NBA, you'd be for that. I feel like a woman, I consider myself a woman. today. It's completely absurd. You would literally have no women with vaginas, which is the old school women thing. You'd have none of them playing in the WNBA. You'd have an NBA filled with men, and then you'd have a WNBA filled with men with wangs and boobs, which actually seems sort of interesting to me. Like, just as a, it just seems kind of funny, I suppose. Anyway, okay, so she's, I'd say a little bit, and by the way, what she's doing is she's throwing the young her under the bus. I, I think that really is the point. The Dawn Staley, who was a young girl, great, who loved basketball, became an excellent basketball player. Again, 16 points a game, playing professionally. I'm not even making any WNBA jokes here, like did her thing, then becomes a female basketball coach, and she's doing well, right? Like there's, there, she's got a good team and everything else. And then she's throwing the young, the girl out there who's the 12 year old version of her, who's now gonna have to compete with the 12 year old boy. You're throwing yourself under the bus, lady. Uh, but, but it's not just the coaches that are confused and the players that are for this, it's the entire media elite. So columnist at USA Today, Nancy Armour wrote this about Dawn Staley's comments. Dawn Staley is a goddamn national treasure. She's asked by the usual suspects about transgender athletes, says transgender women should be allowed to play, then skewers the guy by saying she'll know this will now create a firestorm ahead of the biggest game, and I'm okay with that. But it's like, what's so great about that? What is so great about saying that a bunch of guys can play against girls and most likely push girls out, so girls will not be in any of these competitive leagues because it will be taken over by men who just, again, your words, Don Silly, consider themselves women. 
Well, my friend Megyn Kelly did not hold back when analyzing this lunacy. You could stand up for women, but you're too cowardly to do it. She says, I don't have all the answers, but I'm always looking for more of them. I've got one for you, Nancy. Shut the f up until you know what you're talking about. Because girls are getting hurt by male basketball players posing as girls. I take you out to Massachusetts where Lowell was playing in a game. The Lowell School was playing in a game and they had to call it at the half because three players got hurt. It's happening over and over and over and over. I'm so sick of these women who are so terrified of the woke mob or trying to shore up their own bona fides with this crowd, afraid to say what they know is right. I have a daughter who played basketball just a weeks ago. And the thought of her going up against a biological man on that court is terrifying. I just adore her. Um, you know, to get Megan fired up, like it takes a lot to get her fired up and dropping F-bombs and everything else. But that is, that's mama bear right there. She does not want to have her daughter get elbowed in the face by some dude or be choked by some dude or be out swam by some dude, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it, it, is, it is worth it to show a little emotion around some of this and to call out the nonsense. And of course, what she's really calling out there is this, this insane thing where the woke have decided that tolerance, and they don't really mean it, but in, in the screwed up way that they look at the world, if you had a hierarchy of importance, right, a triangle of importance, they're putting tolerance at the top. So we are tolerant of everything, except the problem is you're gonna have to throw a lot of people under the bus to put tolerance up there. And by the way, how woke, or I'm sorry, how tolerant are the woke of everybody else. Ever think about that? Not very. So where does this all come from? Well, this woke gender ideology, it's just cultural Marxism. It's just an upending of everything we knew when nothing is right or wrong, nothing is true or false or anything else. We'll lay that out quite eloquently if I do say so myself in just a moment. But let me talk to you guys about Cozy Earth. Did you know that 35% of adults report experiencing poor sleep quality? Let me help you put on something that is gonna transform your sleep. Cozy Earth. Discover the secret to better sleep with Cozy Earth's luxurious bedding products. And here's an exclusive, exclusive offer just for our listeners. Use code Dave for 35% off at CozyEarth.com. Cozy Earth bedding products are crafted with temperature regulating technology, adapting to your body's needs, ensuring a sleep experience tailored to you. They only use the very best fabrics, materials, and weaves, offering superior softness that invites you to sink into a world of comfort. Worried about commitment? Cozy Earth stands by the quality and longevity of their products. Enjoy a 100 nights sleep trial and a 10 year warranty on all purchase purchases. That's a decade of unparalleled comfort and support. Incorporating Cozy Earth products into your self-care routine can enhance your sleep quality and overall wellness. Treat yourself to ultimate comfort with Cozy Earth's bedding and sleepwear and prioritize your self-care and sleep health. Head over to CozyEarth.com. Use promo code Dave for an exclusive 35% off. Upgrade your nights, transform your days with Cozy Earth and check out the shorts I was wearing them last night. All right, so what is going on here? Why is up, down? Why is left, right? Why are penises vaginas? Well, it's because of cultural Marxism. Nothing that we once knew that generations before us fought hard for and died for seems to be valuable to these people. So what must they also do? They must, once you've gone woke, you must bow at the altar of wokeness and you must try to upend the system that has given you everything. So here's a man who looks like a deflated job of the HUD. His name is Michael Moore, you know him. He was, uh, they did a couple documentaries. He's a far left nutbag. Uh, he went on the highly corporate controlled NBC, new, it's, I'm gonna call it NBC News. I guess it's part of the entertainment division, but you tell me if this is entertaining or not. He went on the Seth Meyers show and here he is with just a whole bunch of woke crap about how horrible white people are. So if I could just speak to my fellow angry white American guys who are semi-uneducated like me. <laughs> Dudes, give it up. <laughs> it's, we've been running the show for 10,000 years. It's like, it's like we've, we've had a long run as men running everything. And, 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 you know, it, it, the Yankees could never win as many pennants as we've won in these 10,000 years as right. men. So why don't we just take a break? Let the majority gender run the show. Just for, yeah. Just, you know, just how, to see how it would go. What are you scared of? W women actually like us. <laughs> Most of us. <laughs>
Ugh, it's just so pathetic and Seth Myers just to see how it would go. It's just these people are all so, he does look like a deflated job of the hood. Muda Luda, bring me solo and the okay white people. They're just awful. Absolutely awful. And you and it's like what does what does that have to do with entertainment? What do, it's a little bizarre. I don't think that they're bringing other uh, people of other races on to shit on their race, but they do it with white people constantly. And then, of course, there are real world consequences when you have prescribed to this ridiculous oppression Olympics. Check this out from Fox News. If you think that woke is good for people, check this out up in Boston, which is just Boston has just lost its freaking mind. Uh, Boston Hospital to scale back on child abuse and neglect reports that can perpetuate structural racism. Did you catch that? They are not going to report on as much child abuse because a certain type color person is apparently committing more in the Boston area and they think that makes people think that structural racism is real. Call me crazy, and I know it's, we didn't do a show on Monday, it's Tuesday, so I'm just fresh off a longer weekend. But child abuse is bad no matter who's committing. Let's put that around the internet. Too. Yeah, he's freaking out. He's freaking, he fell out of his chair, people. Um, of course, the other thing that these people do is they reward the wrong people and they punish the right people. So if you're a tax-paying, law-abiding citizen, they're gonna take from you, they're gonna punish you, they're gonna make things harder for you. And if you're just someone who's endlessly sucking and not in a good way, they're gonna give you a lot of stuff. Here's Kamala saying that that elderly man pretending to be President Joe Biden, that he's got a new initiative to wipe out student loan regardless of how much money your family has or what the hell you've been doing, or even if you graduated. And so today then, building on the work that we've done thus far, I'm announcing a new plan to forgive more loans for 25 million more Americans, including millions of our public servants. And that means, for example, if you've paid undergrad loans for 20 plus years or graduate loans for 25 or more years, your loans will be completely forgiven, regardless of your income and even if you did not graduate. Even if you didn't graduate, even if you don't know what the F you're doing, and they're gonna eliminate loans regardless of income. So think about this. Think about how insane this is. You could come from, a, first off, the, the idea of wiping out student loan, no one is forced to get into loans in the first place and all that, so wiping out loan, and by the way, you're not just wiping it out. The, lo the money that is owed has to go somewhere. So you're just pushing it to other people who didn't make these mistakes. That's number one, we're all gonna pay for it. So I love that they think they're such good, oh, I wiped out the loan, I, look at me, I have a pen and I scribbled something and it's gone now. Like as if that's it, and of course that's not what it is but you guys get that. But the fact that they're doing this, regardless of, of income of your family, so that means you could come from a family that has, let, that's, I don't know, you're worth $5 million. Okay, great, I don't know, great, that's just great, as long as you did it legally, that's great. You go to Syracuse University. You know how much Syracuse, I wanted to go to Syracuse University. When I was back in college, going to college back in 94, Syracuse was about sixteen to $18,000 a year and my dad said to me, if you wanna to go to Syracuse, private school, it was sports broadcasting, I wanted to be an ESPN anchor to bring this whole show kind of to fruition. My dad said, if, okay, if you wanna go there, you gotta pay for it, but if you wanna to go to a state school here in New York, it's about eight grand a year, we'll pay for it, and I made the choice and that's what I did. Uh, Syracuse, which at the time was 16 to 18 grand, it's now 60K a year. Uh, I'm not a mathematician here, but uh, 60K times four is 240K of debt that you would have. Well, now if your family that's worth five million, you sent your kid there and they got a degree in underwater lesbian basket weaving, they're gonna wipe out the 240 grand. Does any of that seem fair to you? Doesn't seem fair to me. There is a peacock going bananas out there. Can you think they can hear that? Can you guys hear that? There is a peacock, a peacock. we got a lot of peacocks out here. They're going crazy. Because, because that's how stupid this whole thing is. The peacocks can't take it anymore either. <laughs> Okay, but the bigger thing is they have, they have so broken the brains of so many people that this woke culturally Marxist, Marxist oppression Olympic ideology, it now extends beyond human beings. It applies to the sun, the moon, the temperature, nature itself. That's right, Sonny Hostin on The View yesterday. Uh, she's talking about the, uh, well, just watch this. 
Makeup artist, when the earthquake was happening, she put her coat on and she was like, Jesus is coming. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. We've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. The and rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. And then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Oh, I love for the, the first time in cicada, cicada. like no, no, 100 no, years. No, 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 no. no, no. Two different, no, two, no well, they, this is what I read. There's two, two, different, there's times two of, different kinds of cicadas. Yes, two different times, times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad cicadas. But no. for the first time in in, in many, many years. No, seven, so, every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you know better. I, but in I a way. I say all those, all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change exists that's more or something point. is really going on. Or I just don't know what I'm saying and I'm just combining a whole bunch of things that have nothing to do with each other and that's what we do on this show. It's like a brain-broken orgy of insanity. The cicadas are coming. The cicadas are coming. That's right. John Cicada and his wife are coming and they're going to sing for us. That actually sounds like a perfectly lovely evening. Um, okay, but it just, can, I mean, that woman, that woman. <sighs> but what happens? Okay. You think boys are girls. You think everyone's racist. You want white people to not have any more power. You want to pay off debt for people that don't, uh, that don't deserve it. Well, eventually this thing will eat its own tail, right? And you will destroy everything that once was good. Uh, for example, uh, San Francisco, a place that once was good. Believe it or not, the first time I went to San Francisco was probably about 2011. And I was there for a weekend. We were doing a radio show. This is well before the Rubin Report. And I, I thought it was such an absolutely wonderful city. It was the first time I had ever gone to a city and thought I could live here. I, like, I was just like, I was absolutely in love with it. It was gorgeous. Weather was great. People were nice. There were dogs everywhere. I was just, I really loved it. It is now an abject dystopian shithole. And how is it that it became, went from that to that? Well, it's because of progressive policies. Here's San Francisco supervisor, Connie Chang, uh, Connie Chan, and uh, she's calling uh, public safety a critical issue, even though she's the one who called to dismantle the San Francisco Police Department. Public safety is a critical issue that we're facing, not just in then San why Francisco. Why do you want to dismantle SFPD? Because Connie? people, look at these people. They can't even let me talk because they're too they're afraid. If I actually start talking, then I will actually be able to tell the truth if about talking, the fact that these people are playing the politics radio. for Thanks, public right? safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Automated Supervisor Chan is running for re-election this November, where public safety is the main focus. In a sane society, that woman would be in jail, right? She was in dereliction of her duty. She defunded the police. San Francisco is now a fentanyl. It, it is like if you combine a, a fentanyl with a zombie movie, that's what's going on there. It is absolutely insane. They've got a map so that you don't step on poop when you're walking down the streets. Um, they are destroying everything. And she's very upset because she's being questioned. If they would just, if these reporters would just let me speak. No, you are the exact type of person that destroyed the place. And of course, this, this is virtually every single progressive politician and policy. They destroy absolutely everything. So let's connect this to the immigration crisis because we got a crisis. Uh, AOC, this is a video from a couple months ago. You'll remember this one. This is uh, her standing in front of a hotel which had now has now been completely overtaken by illegal immigrants. And now there's crime all over the place and drugs and a whole bunch more. Uh, here she is defending her and the Democrat policies as it relates to this and, and being booed in the meantime because there are a couple sane people still in New York. They are prevented from getting jobs, they are prevented from employment, and that is part of the strain on our public systems. The faster that folks can access the work that they're asking for legally, the better we can solve this problem. And the third is extension of temporary protected status for Venezuelans who are the largest population that are arriving here. So with that, we thank you all, and ready to wrap up? With that, we thank you all. Everyone here hates me. Okay. 
Um, she says, she's talking about consensus. She, the three things she lays out, they, there's not consensus on any of this. Is all, this is all complete nonsense unless you are a brain broken, woke progressive. Her consensus, let's just lay out the three real quick, uh, that they need more federal resources. I don't think there's consensus on that. How about we build a wall and have a border? Then we wouldn't have to worry about that. That's number one. Number two, uh, they just need work authorization. Again, I don't think we need more work authorization. I think we got to figure out who's here illegally and get them out of the country. Number three, we just need extension of temporary documentation. No, you're here illegally. You're selling drugs, raping women. You got to go. But guess what, guys? In her own district, in her own district, all hell is breaking loose because she is in charge of that district and people have had it. Uh, we've got a tweet here from Viral News NYC. Migrants from Floyd Bennett Field have begun asking locals for money near Kings Plaza Mall in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, as a lifelong Brooklyn resident, witnesses, witnessing this unprecedented situation highlights the urgency of addressing the unsustainable migrant crisis, which affects everyone involved. I think this is a district right close to her, not directly her district, just to be absolutely clear. Uh, but you can see this. I mean, this is not sustainable. People just living on the streets outside of malls. That mall, actually, I don't want to brag. But when I was out of college and I was an assistant manager over at Electronics Boutique, moving video games, uh, late 90s, 98, 99, a couple times I temporarily was the assistant manager of that mall. Originally I was working in Long Island, but sometimes I think the guy that was in charge there was drunk. He didn't show up to work a couple times. And I had to, I had to get over there and, and uh, work anyway. Uh, now I can talk about AOC's jurisdiction specifically. Uh, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, who we've shown you a bunch of clips lately. He's just been an absolute uh, truth teller that's working his way through mainstream media. I can't, I can only imagine how much longer they're gonna allow that happen. Here he is on what's going on in her district itself. I look at AOC, what an incredible, incredibly successful politician she is, and what a horrific manager she is. Her, her jurisdiction looks like a third world country, and, and yet she's great at social media and, and making outrageous statements and getting $5 at a time on you know every way she can on social. Good for her. But wow, look what she did when Amazon came knocking for ten thousand. Yeah, that jobs. to me blew my mind. How does that I mean, you survive? So, so why would you want to reward that? Why wouldn't you say, "Excuse me, could I get better management, please? I live here, I pay taxes here, and I'd like a job. And I don't think you're doing a great job for me as a manager. How about I hire somebody else? That's what I would encourage. Not that she isn't just great as a politician. There are countries that have weak leaders. There are states that have bad governors. I think people, the great thing about democracy is say, we can do better. Right. Putting up my head, let's do better. Do you think you, as you talk, I get this, not personal, it's just business. Just business. Isn't that perfect? Because what he's showing is that's exactly what AOC is. Oh, that, that, I guess that's a weird hand signal that I'm making there. But that is what she is in that she's a really good salesperson, I suppose. I mean, I find her vile and disingenuous and everything else, but, but I can't deny that she's bamboozled a large amount of people. So that's one road that she's going down. But at the same time, there's a parallel road and that parallel, or I guess they're dividing roads going in different directions. So she's got this career track that seems to be going in the right direction for her. It'll be really good for her. But what's going on in her own district is an absolute disaster in terms of crime and immigration and everything else. And real quick, I'm sure most of you remember this, what they're referring to is those 10,000 jobs that Amazon was gonna bring to her district, to her district. And just when they announced that they were gonna bring these uh, factories there and these distribution centers there, all the house prices started going up there because everyone knew all these jobs were gonna come in and it was gonna be great for that area. And then she fought it because she doesn't like big business and then 10,000 jobs just disappeared. So instead of 10,000 new jobs in her district, she now has a, an untold amount of illegals and crime and drugs and all the rest of it. But she's just one example. This virus is spreading across the country and into virtually every blue city and state. Check this out, Denver, Colorado. I said San Francisco was one of the most beautiful places the first time I visited, Denver was too. And then we went back to Denver two years ago for the Don't Burn This Country book tour. I was shocked how in just a couple years, Denver had absolutely collapsed. Check out this homeless situation and well, it's not just homeless. Check out this homeless illegal immigrant situation happening in Denver right now. Under a bright blue early springtime sky, camping tents line a giant parking lot. On the sidewalk behind them, an ad hoc outdoor haircut is underway, while flags of Venezuela hang nearby. This is Denver, Colorado. 
For a city its size, it's taken in more undocumented migrants the last year or so than any other in America, some 40,000. 40,000, not undocumented, 40,000 illegal immigrants now in the city of Denver. Where do they come from? What do they believe in? What are they doing for the system? Are they just mooching off the system? I'm not telling you every one of these people are bad. Maybe 39,000 of the 40,000 are good, decent people. Perhaps doesn't give them a right to be here. But if a thousand of those 40,000 are just kind of up to no good, that is a problem. So that's what's happening now in Denver. Well, let's jump over to Chicago because Chicago, can I get the numbers on how many people were shot in Chicago this weekend? We'll get you those fun numbers on the other side. But first, let's look about at uh, the new tuberculosis. The new tuberculosis case is breaking out in Chicago because of these homeless shelters. As health officials ramp up contact tracing at migrant shelters, we spoke with two medical experts today who tell us while this is cause for concern, the general public has no reason to panic. Outbreaks occur in close quarters. The Chicago Department of Public Health confirms cases of tuberculosis at a few different shelters. Officials call the number of cases small, but won't disclose which sites they've originated from. So the people who are most at risk of tuberculosis are the other migrants living in that shelter. This comes in the midst of a measles outbreak at the Pilsen shelter. There is no effective vaccine against tuberculosis. Do you guys remember the three years that they locked people in houses and didn't let kids go to school and didn't let you go to your grandma's funeral and force you to be injected with things and all of the other nonsense? And now there's tuberculosis in illegal immigrant shelters and there's no vaccine and we don't know what the hell's going on, but let's just keep importing them. So congratulations. Congratulations, that's what's going on in Chicago. Chicago actually had a fantastic weekend. Only 15 people were shot and only two were killed. We should send, I'm gonna send a bottle of champagne to Brandon Johnson, the mayor of Chicago. He's guy's great, absolutely great. But because I'm an equal opportunity offender, now I'm gonna show you that these bad Democrat policies at the border, they usually leak into the blue states and the blue cities because they've decided to be sanctuaries and give all of these extra services and everything, but they even leak into the red states. So I'm putting this one as a little pin because I wanna keep track of this one because now I'm gonna show you something pretty bad happening right here in Florida, in Palm Beach, Florida, where three Guatemalan illegals forced a woman into a car and attacked her sexually and a whole bunch more before she was able to escape. It is unclear how this has all worked out now whether these people are arrested. I think maybe they are, but I'm putting this out there so the DeSantis team can get on it. And I guarantee you we're gonna have a resolution to this thing in a day or two, take a look. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office says a woman was forced into a car in this neighborhood. Neighbors say they're very surprised. Around Lake Osborne, bikers. All right here, babe. And neighbors picking up trash like Alyssa Suarez says it's usually as calm as the lake. So it's a really quiet neighborhood. It's very peaceful. She's one of many surprised after the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office arrested these three men. Spokesperson for the Sheriff's Office says all three are undocumented immigrants from Guatemala. They face various charges, but the Sheriff's Office says they forced a woman into a car, then committed sexual battery on her at two different locations before the woman escaped then flagged a passerby nearby for help. Sounds awful and I hope she's okay and that sounds scary. It's definitely not the norm here. So I didn't hear anything, no sirens, no screams, no nothing. Lauren Thiessen says she never worries about her kids playing outside. She says she's now concerned. I have children, I have a younger daughter, myself by myself going for walks, it's just crazy. Court records show one of the men, Andre Felipe Morales, was cited in January for not having a driver's license. The citation was no elf prose, meaning the state attorney abandoned the charges. Records show the state agreed to abandon prosecution if the defendant provided or showed proof of paying $100 and obtaining a driver's license. We reached out to the state attorney's office past 9 p.m. tonight about how it's possible for him to obtain a driver's license if he's undocumented, like the sheriff's office says. Spokesperson told us he'd help us when the office reopens in the morning and he can get a good look at the full case file. Okay, so the reason I wanted to show you that one is that even in Florida, a law and order state that is doing everything right, these things are going to happen. You are gonna have women sexually assaulted by three Guatemalan illegals, and this is a problem. And then the state attorney lets this guy out because of a $100 fine. Like, I'm pinning this one so that my buddy, R.D. DeSantis, let's take care of this. I don't know if you have to fire the state attorney. Maybe there'll be more info on this in the next day or two. But I get this is the type of thing that I, I can just guarantee you 
will be dealt with correctly here in Florida. But the point is the states are going to have to start doing things differently because the other problem, and wait till you see this next clip, is that the states really are going in their own directions and you will have to decide where you want to live. I am now going to show you a clip. This is not from Gaza City. This is not from Syria. This is not from Iran. This is not from, I don't know, give me one more of those spectacular places. This ain't from Lebanon. This is from Dearborn, Michigan, which is the future Lebanon of America. Uh, and here is a protester, a Hamas guy, explaining why he chants death to America. We've been asked in the past, why are our protests on the International Day of Quds, why are they so anti-America? Why don't we just focus more on Israel and not talk so much about America? Gaza has shown the entire world why these protests are so anti-America. Because it's the United States government that provides the funds for all of the atrocities that we just heard about. And this is why Imam Khomeini, who declared the International Day of Quds, this is why he would say to pour all of your, cha all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that, have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Any system that would allow such atrocities and such devilry to, a ha to happen and would support it, such a system does not deserve to exist on God's earth. You're born in Michigan. That's the United States. That is not sectarian, crazed, religious, extreme calls for violence, which it obviously is. Like, do you think this guy uh, would be happy if some bad things happened in the United States? He wants the system to go down, right? It's not just genocide, Joe. It's the whole thing. Uh, that's happening in Dearborn, Michigan now. That's Rashida Tlaib's district, no surprise. Um, and you can see the Democrats are now pandering to these people because Michigan is a swing state. This is a huge, huge problem. So at every level, what I'm trying to show you on today's show is that it's like every level, immigration, the people who are legally here, I'll, I'll go on the assumption that that guy is legally here, um, but do you think he'd be upset if, uh, I don't know, somebody just blew up a temple and killed 100 people? Do you think he'd be upset if somebody blew up Congress? I mean, he's telling you, they're telling you, and, and of course we're gonna do nothing about this, right? We're not, a, we're not a serious country at a national level. We are not gonna do anything about it, but I would say, that in certain states, you better start doing something about it. You better start thinking about this stuff. Uh, I'm fairly certain that if that was a guy wearing a MAGA hat talking about taking down the system, and then there were a bunch of other MAGA people chanting death to America, I'm pretty sure them and their grandmothers would be locked up right now, but you guys kind of get how it operates. And of course, as you destroy everything, the other thing that you have to destroy is people's ability to think that the system works at all. And that's what the Democrats are really good at. See, they want you to think that the system, the progressives and everything, they want you to think the system doesn't work, so they destroy everything and then they point to that as evidence that nothing works. One of the things that they've destroyed is our confidence in elections because they don't believe in voter ID. Check out this from N Wokeness. 42 out of 50 states in the United States do not require a photo ID to vote. Countries that require a fo photo ID to vote, should we do this? UK, Italy, Chile, Spain, Malta, Brazil, Israel, Latvia, Russia, France, Mexico, Australia, Ireland, Poland, Greece, Croatia, Finland, Estonia, Belgium, Sweden, Bulgaria, Portugal, Hungary, Ecuador, Slovenia, Slovakia, Romania, Denmark, Germany, Lithuania, Argentina, Colombia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Luxembourg, Netherlands, South Africa, Czech Republic. Do you think this is a problem? in the West, specifically in the United States. Who is voting? How are they voting? How many people have we let in here? What level of fraud do we have? And then as more and more people start to question it, they're gonna go see that is the proof that the thing doesn't work. But uh, let's go up north for just a second because it is not just the United States that has a major, major problem right now. Uh, it is Canada because there are I would say Hamas supporting extremists all over the country protesting every weekend. They're going not only to temples and churches, they're going to Jewish owned businesses uh, and they are basically calling for the destruction of Canada right in front of cameras and nobody will do a damn thing. By 2016, Muslims will be the biggest religious group the world over. 
what are you going to do then? Actually, to oppose Sharia is even then. We have families. We are making babies. You are not. Our population is going down the slump. One day we can have a Muslim majority nation here in Canada, right in your face. You say that you want Sharia law to displace Canadian law. That doesn't sound very respectful. In majority, you wouldn't have any other option, my friend. Islam doesn't endorse gayism. Islam doesn't endorse homosexuality. The gay people are doing is against the commandments of God. What is that guy doing in Canada? He doesn't like Canada very much, but he knows Canada because it puts tolerance at that top of that hierarchy uh, isn't going to do anything. So you've got people in Canada saying, we're going to take out Canada. You've got people in America chanting death to America, and we will just sit here and do nothing. The pot will keep getting hotter. And what happens to the frog? It does not work out well for him. I guess the question really is, for all of these people that are, that are very confused about these issues, I know you guys aren't confused about these issues, and many of you, I mean, if I told you the amount of emails and messages I see on locals and everything else, you guys that are getting guns, uh, that are figuring out ways to grow food, that are moving to states more in line with your values. So there, there is a massive good thing happening sort of at the ground level in America, but the machine is not going to stop. If you think that we can wake these people up, we cannot. I wanna show you a clip of Jimmy Kimmel. We showed you a portion of his monologue on Friday. Uh, he recently went to Japan for a week and listen to how he lauds Japan and how he uh, contrasts that, let's say, with what's going on here in America. But now after traveling to Japan, I realize that this place, this USA we're always chanting about, is a filthy and disgusting country. <laughs> we were in Japan for seven days. Not only did I not encounter a single dirty bathroom, the bathrooms in Tokyo and Kyoto are cleaner than our operating rooms here. <laughs> Everywhere you go, the bathrooms are clean, they don't smell bad, they have those toilets that wash you from the inside out. <laughs> and not just in a hotel, restaurants, bars, truck stops. I went to two truck stops. I swear to God, the bathroom's cleaner than Jennifer Garner's teeth. The cleanest, <laughs> beautiful. And it's not just the bathroom, there's no litter, people carry their own trash. There are no garbage cans in Tokyo. It's 30 years ago, some terrorists put some like, poisonous gas in some trash cans. They're like, okay, no more trash cans. <laughs> Everybody clean up after yourselves. And guess what? They clean up after themselves. They bring their garbage to their houses. And it's like the whole country is Disneyland and we're living at Six Flags. Dude. You live in LA, you're a progressive, worth probably a hundred million dollars, who pushes for all of the wrong politicians and policies to be instituted. You're upset on how, how dirty our streets are and the crime and the rest of it. It's your guys doing it and you're gonna keep doing it. Erin uh, Wexler, who I've had on the show, she'll be on, on the panel on Friday. Uh, she had a great tweet on this. She retweeted that video we just showed you and she wrote, you mean to tell me that a country with an ethnically homogenous population, supremely strict immigration laws, strong work and family culture, and ban on dual citizenship is doing better? So they just won't stop. Jimmy Kimmel is not retarded. He knows what he's doing, right? He's taking the check to say the stuff. But he, if he at this point doesn't realize that it is his party and his policies and his ideology that has led to this, th then he is. But I don't think, I don't think he's retarded. They keep, my guys told me not to say retarded anymore. What, what are you gonna do? Anyway, uh, there are some sane people left and we gotta find them and we gotta collect them and we gotta strengthen them. Uh, Sage Steele, who I put at the top of the show, she's one of them, she'll be here on Wednesday. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard's another one of them, she'll be in studio in a couple weeks, and she, of course, is a former Democrat. She is a current serving member of our military, she is a true patriot. I've got a couple differences of opinion with her, uh, but here she is talking about the extremism in the Democrat party. Has become a party uh, that is opposed to freedom, that is opposed to the central and foundational principles um, that exist within our founding documents and that serve as the identity of, of who we are as Americans and what this country is supposed to be about. Uh, it has become a party that is um, controlled by this elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven, uh, who are driving forward this, this quote unquote woke agenda. Um, and we see it through their uh, racializing of everything. We see this through their defund the police um, uh, mission. We see this through their open border policies. We see this through uh, how in their education policy, they are failing our kids. 
uh, and how they are pushing um, this narrative that ultimately is a rejection of objective truth. Uh, the fact that it's a question up for debate about whether or not, well, actually, it's not a question up for debate for them. They are they are actively pushing for um, you know boys who identify as girls to compete against girls in sports, uh, changing our language so that the word woman, the identity of being a woman, is is essentially being erased from our society, and it is it is the height of hypocrisy and frankly an act of hatred towards women that they are so intent. On doing this, and ironic that it's coming from the party that for so long proclaim proclaimed themselves to be the greatest feminists and the most pro woman party in the country. I go into detail around each of these issues and more um, in in the book, but you will see as we go through each of these issues, fundamental and foundational to every one of them is that sadly the Democratic Party has become a party that is so consumed by their desire for power, this insatiable hunger for power. That they are willing to destroy, um, they are willing to destroy our republic, our democracy, our freedom, just so that they can try to hold on to power and gain more power. Isn't that something? Ex Democrat, right there. Think how fundamentally this different this country would be right now had the Democrats only three and a half years ago, instead of going with old Joe Biden, and people said, "Well, he's not that woke, and he's going to be an old Democrat, and he'll stop them." Uh, had they chosen her, she was the last one in it against him. Now, maybe that was never going to happen, but that might be the last moment that Democrats had a choice. And they don't have a choice anymore because I'm going to show you one more clip of my interview. Uh, the full thing is up on Locals right now. Uh, but this is a portion of my interview with Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the name Kennedy, synonymous with the Democrats. And as you guys know, the day he announced the day he announced he was running as a Democrat, I said, I don't know if he'll be a Republican at the end of this thing, but he will not be a Democrat. And he is not a Democrat. He is now an independent. So everything that, that Tulsi just laid out there that is true, that I think I've spent the last hour laying out in my own way, uh, listen to RFK now talk about how we can actually escape all of that and get this country back. I'm going to try. I'm not going to feed into the vitriol or the rancor, the demonization, all this. I'm going to try to identify the common ground, the things that we all share in common, rather than focusing on those little issues that keep us all apart. And what I found is that the, the, the landscapes that are occupied by that common ground are so much bigger. You know, we all think we're so different as Americans, but we actually share the same values. Everybody wants to have great education for our kids. Everybody wants, nobody thinks it's a good idea that this and a low end drug cartel is running America's border policy. Nobody thinks right. that's a good idea, right? right? Everybody wants to make sure our veterans are cared for, that they're not eating in soup kitchens and that PTSD and, you know, these, uh, uh, these brain injuries that, we're taking care of them. Everybody wants to take care of the environment. If you if you want to start a fist fight, talk about climate change. No, but if you want to um, if you want to find out a place where America, everybody agrees, talk about toxicity in our water and our food, um, in our air, and then everybody wants the soils restored in our country, which could solve so many problems. The path out of our debt is in the soils. The path out of climate, you know, whether you believe in it or not. If you believe in it, the best solution is not top-down controls, but rather restoring our soil because that's the biggest carbon sink that there is. So, you know, there are there are solutions for all of these, and there's ways of talking about these issues that bring us together. So we can we can make a choice. Look, I, you can talk about, I, he gets a little in the weeds, no pun intended, when it comes to the soil and things of that nature, so people just can't maybe fully see what he's talking about. But the broad thing, the broad idea that he's talking about is that in that landscape of what brings us together, most of us want the same things. A lot of the people that we've shown you, whether it's the Democrats pushing for more illegals or pushing for the uh, policies that bring in more crime or the group of people who are now trying to bring religious sectarian violence here and call for death to America, like those are the people that should be on the outside of everything. But we have decided for some reason that the, that the large majority of us who are sane, who are relatively centrist, who are willing to agree to disagree and live with people who are a little different, we're, we're too damn quiet. 
And, and I'm, I just have this horrific feeling we are getting very close to the precipice of when this will all be gone. And that is a scary thought, that really is. But we have a chance, we humans always have a chance, but you don't have to go to the pits of hell to, to realize that you better do something Right, like maybe you can not always go to the pits of hell. That's the idea. Like you don't have, to, it doesn't have to be the worst possible thing before the rebound. Maybe enough of us could wake up. Right, that doesn't mean you have to vote for RFK. It doesn't mean you have to vote for this guy or that guy. But you, you gotta understand what these issues are and start explaining to them to some of your friends and family so you can figure out whether it's through voting or community or anything else how you're gonna build a functional, good, flourishing life in the midst of all of this. Uh, guys, my full interview with Vivek Ramaswamy is up across platforms right now. Full things ad free at rubenreport.locals.com. People of the internet live at 1 p.m. with Isabel Brown. We leave you with a cold close that, uh, well, Phoenix really enjoyed this one. Okay, goodbye. Okay, I for you. Please tell me I'm your national anthem. Red, white, blue is in the sky. Summer's in the air and baby heaven's in your eyes. I'm your national anthem.